So this morning's talk is uh, on this uh, motor generator set that you see right here. And um, I don't know, this is maybe six, seven years ago, something like that. It's been a while. And it was at uh, Paul Bab Babcock's company where one day I was out there and uh, 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 I met Mike and uh, one of his partners. Um, and they had this motor running there. Uh, this has come a long way from where it was, and even at that point, it was still uh, pretty incredible. And I'm looking at it, uh, he, he had it running, doing some demos. Uh, Paul was helping with some of the uh, switching circuits. And as you know, uh, Paul's uh, own uh, motor using that switching technology is, is you know, pretty advanced and can do some things that a lot of the regular, re you know, common recovery circuits can't do. And I was asking, uh, asking him, well, can I take a picture or do a little video clip? And he's like, well, yeah, I would hope you want to. So I'm wondering if he just wants to keep it secret and, you know, uh, not let anybody know what's going on. And, you know, um, I wanted to learn more about it. And so, uh, you know, they took it back down to Idaho and didn't really connect for a couple years. And I was glad to find out that uh, there was progress still kind of going on on developing it, advancing it, and, you know, tweaking it along the way to get better and better results. So help welcome uh, Mike Clark. It's been a really fun journey. At times uh, distressing, sometimes frustrating as can be. But it's, it's really been, uh, been uh, a marvelous thing to do. And there'd be times when we'd be working on it and Norm would, Norm would say, dang, we didn't get anything done. I says, Norm, we had success today. What are you talking about? And he'd go, what are you talking about success? I says, well, at least it went around. And I said, and we know not to put that MOSFET in like that ever again. <clears throat> and he says, okay, that, I guess that is success. But that's, that's my friend Norm's side. In fact, uh, Tony Craddock has a, a CD about the Lockridge motor. And uh, the Lockridge motor is... Uh, is something that John Bedini had in his shop because Norm took it to him. Norm developed that, built that, and made it work, and, and uh, he took it to John and showed him that. And jo John and Norm had been friends for many years. And, uh, you know, and after I had to retire and I had all this time on my hands when I wasn't uh, planting and pruning and training grapes and all the stuff that we do in our estate on the river there, on the Snake River, I thought, man, I need something else to do. And, and so Norm and I started this adventure, and, and he, was, he would be telling me about John Bedini, and I said, you know, it would be really cool to be able to go meet John. And he says, well, maybe I should call him. I said, well, call him, and let's see. So he called up Gary, and, and, uh, and Gary says, Norm, get up here. We haven't seen you in a long time. Let's go, because Norm, being a pilot, he used to fly up, and he'd spend days with, with John and playing with all the experiments that John had. So he knew about a lot of those things. And Norm had been working on free energy for many years. And he had all kinds. Of, when you go into a shop, there's a section, of, there's a spot in a shop where he's got all this stuff piled up, and he has these old motors and all the stuff that he had there. So we got up to John Bedini's, and uh, we spent a couple of days with John messing around in his shop. And he had the Bedini coal window motor there on the bench. And so he fired that thing up. And... Needless to say that I was just stricken with that machine. I, I'm going like, holy smokes, this thing is absolutely amazing. Let me just give you an example of how this circuitry has evolved. So we start out with simple little things like this. And we graduate to something like this. And then we're adding... We're not getting what we want, and so we add some capacitors, and you know, and, and it goes from 100 RPM to maybe 150 RPM, and and you know, and that's good, but it's not what we need, and we keep we keep developing, we keep going. <clears throat> we have 
this on the shaft of that thing with the, all these neodymium magnets, and we're using a Hall effect switch. So that's what John had on the, on the uh, window motor. And we're using this Hall switch. And as time would prove, this would become obsolete to us. And every time we started the motor up, I've got to adjust this in three different dimensions to get the optimum uh, work out of the motor. So we took our motor up to, uh, came up to Spokane, went to Flyback Energy to Paul's shop, and, and uh, all I had was that motor. We didn't have anything else. We hadn't even built that other, the, what we have, what we're using is the generator head. This was our second prototype, actually. <clears throat> and so we didn't have that built. We just had the motor. So we got, got to Paul's, and, and he said, well, that's a pretty cool-looking machine. Uh, and Paul will tell you, in secret, he's going, damn, another air core motor. <laughs> Because at the time, Paul, Paul didn't understand uh, everything about the, uh, the air core motor. And I really didn't understand the damn thing. I just knew that it went around and around. And so, and John, because John had been telling him for years, the air core is the answer. Air core is the, it's, it's got the magic sauce. And so, Paul helps us. And so we go, at that time, we had that thing running about 400 RPM. And, and with Paul's help, we tuned that thing up and we, were, we more than doubled that. And that particular day, and, and many of you probably know him, uh, Dave Squires uh, pops into the shop, and he comes over and very snarkily says, oh, we've got a roundy, roundy machine. What are you going to do with that? And I just looked at him. I said, I'm going to power my house with this machine. He says, uh-huh, uh -huh, okay. And that was when it was going really slow. And he came back in the afternoon when Paul and I had been fiddling with that all day, and we had, we'd jumped that speed up. And he goes, oh, okay. So here it goes. If you notice, you can hear it. You can hear what it's doing. We sort of shortened the, the, the uh, pulse width even more, and it speeds up more and more. So now we get to the point where we can change that. We can advance that timing. We can bring that timing up to there, and it'll, you can hear it coming up. I'm at 125 volts AC right now, and it's still coming up.